And I told her, oh, really, really? I tell you what, I like to deposit my banana with you. And? Take my but, banana and deposit it. you know, you so they don't take accounts. That's Enjoy. Enjoy. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this episode of In Our Humble Opinion. Ayo! Yo, 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 I know this is how the tone of the whole show is going to go. Hello. But on my left, I have. <laughs> See, I knew she was going to do that too. <laughs> on my <laughs> left, I have. <laughs> the cool grandma. Are you cool today? Cool. Cool, not, not hot today? Hot and cool. Cool grandma. Hot Daisy Milo. Irani cool Subaya. Namaste. See, I got Namaste. that one right. Namaste. Tsupuite, tsupuite, tsupuite. Yes, yes. Okay, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about a lot of kotes. So many dinglings going around. Why? Because there's, again, 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 for the umpteenth time, we're going to be covering and discussing about sex crimes in Singapore. There's something about sex happening in Singapore, man. It's just, what the hell is going on? And the government taking a tougher stance, before you say anything, a tougher stance on these sort of crimes as well. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, we will also be discussing about the increase of scamming since 2020 especially. So what is going on in Singapore? We're going to start off with the first story. I'm going to throw this over to the professor on my right. Didn't plan for that, right? No. Okay, it's yours anyway. We're going to be talking about, he's going to be bringing us through this Kote, uh, who's been jailed for four weeks, fined for molesting and harassing a colleague who spoke no English. Gilbert, it's all yours. Okay, so this case is just one of many, as we know. And I think that the bigger picture here is that there's been a dramatic rise in the number of molestation cases in Singapore that between uh, 2016 and 2020, uh, there was a 25% increase, almost 25% increase in molestation cases as compared to the uh, four years before that, 2011 to 2015. And this is something that the authorities have taken note of, which is why they are now enacting new laws to make the punishment more severe. Uh, so obviously, lead, leads us to a couple of things, right? Why are there more molestation cases in Singapore? Let's just quickly talk about this one case here. He is uh, this man um, who was uh, working, and uh, the, this Vietnamese woman was working for him. Uh, he took a fancy to her. Uh, she did not recipro reciprocate, and then he took it upon himself to basically just molest her. And really, she's a really a sad, uh, uh, poor, poor woman, you know, a victim. Um, and uh, we obviously frown on that, so no discussion needed there. Let's talk about why there are more molestation cases in Singapore right now, okay? Um, it's not just a, a, a case, I think, of more cases coming to light. I think there is really an increase in the number of cases. My theory about this is that I think that as people uh, go online more and have more access to all kinds of content online, they're probably more influenced and get more desperate and horny uh, that they are unable to meet their sexual needs. Mm. And therefore, so seem to exist in this fantasy world that they see online where they can just reach out and touch somebody. Wow, sounds okay. like a song. <laughs> um, that's my theory about it. I, I, would, I would be ha glad to hear, you know, if, 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 if any experts actually do a study about this. Mm. What do you guys think? Why do you think there's more increase in molestation cases? Do you agree, first of all, you think that the internet and the access to so much online porn and um, all kinds of strange content is one of the triggers? Let's go to Daisy. What do you think? Well, I'll, well, what do you say? Because this is, I feel, to answer your question first, I think we just know about it and hear about it a lot more. And I think even more importantly is that women are willing to speak out. Mm. And that's been a very big change. I agree 
maybe from the from the molesters part maybe the sexual molestation maybe they are getting you know like you said horny by looking at all this porn and uh, available material yes yes but i feel even then they could have got away with it if it wasn't for the empowerment of women now yes. who are willing to come out it's okay i'm vietnamese i know i'm in a foreign country i'm doing a very lowly job but this is not going to pass yes. i am going to speak up good for her see there's another thing that i feel and that is you see this is again again and again the examples of exploiting the powerless yes. or someone who depends on you who cares for you and you know you're a parent you're a step brother you're an uncle and you use this so coming back to the stiffer penalties i feel no pun intended yeah 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 i don't like this kind of stiff at all <laughs> but the stiffer penalties have been proposed and we see that the increase is substantial will this help maybe maybe marginally but again there is no guarantee that the problem will be controlled in any way i have two solutions to this which i will come up with after chris says uh, that yes what is the reason we are hearing so many cases it's now? the damn porn lie i tell you really come on we've been covering stories like this over the last couple of weeks right look you know quoting what we we've seen in, uh, in the straits times Um, uh, Minister Shanmugam cited th- three cases. A 22-year-old university student who molested a woman on an MRT train. A 22-year-old university student who choked his former girlfriend and pressed his thumb against her left eye. A 23-year-old university student who used a mobile phone to record a video of a woman easing herself in a toilet. Then we have this particular kute who, 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 you know, it was if you read the report, that they found he was also charged with having obscene pictures or videos uh, on his on yes, his yes, cell phone yes. no, right but, yeah. but it's a, it's the porn no so so the point is that the porn might be the reason or access to this kind of material might be the reason but i am heartened to see that the government is reacting to yeah, it or yeah, they yeah, find the yeah, need no, to no, bring no, up I mean, stiffer I like, penalties i like what yeah, minister no. shanmugam said he said this in co- in parliament uh, you shouldn't be able to come to court and say you have a bright future you will go far and so on you can go far but first serve the sentence Sent, yeah, absolutely and i and i completely agree i mean you know i mean seriously i mean what's wrong with the guys today i think that what daisy said is 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 very key there i think that women are more uh, uh, empowered to report this i think mm. that's very important mm. but very often the experts will tell us and I, i i think you see this in a lot of the cases that rape and molestation is not just a crime about sex and very often it's a crime about power, power. That's you know it is about domination yeah 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 uh, and the case of that guy who presses a uh, thumb in the, the the girlfriend's eye he demanded sex from her she refused mm-hmm. it and basically you know he just beat beat he her he just up. wanted to dominate her so so exactly. gilbert coming back to that it is the root cause is misogyny it is disparity of wealth it is about exercising of power and control over the weak guys, the not entitled guys, the not enabled that that is yes. it's very much a, a show of strength yes but guys know? don't you see i mean this guy who committed this crime right he's 48 years old but the uh, the others that were cited by minister they're young guys 22 year olds and 23 year olds is what the hell is going on yeah but i think that you know w- what chris said is interesting and w- what i had raised about the fact that so much online porn is available mm-hmm. but i think that's a trigger the, the the what makes them feel emboldened to then act is the feeling of power right. over the woman yeah and that's the problem you see so it's a two step process Correct. you see so I've i think that you know if they feel that they've been triggered but they dare not make a move let's say for example on another man yeah right mm-hmm. they're not going to do it they will just internalize their desire mm-hmm. you know yeah. and 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 deal with it i think that the imbalance of power is a a, a factor and I very often they pick people who are like you ma- said powerless. weak and not entitled yeah. not a, yeah. that's what they thought about this vietnamese girl right yes. oh my god she's weak she's here she's not going to open her yes, mouth exactly. but you know so for that can i suggest i've got two suggestions not sure. even one okay two prong suggestion see first of all i think what would yes we are looking at stiffer penalties from uh, the minister yes. he's talked about it the government is discussing it debating it i feel there are two areas which really make a difference one is loss of credibility and the second is loss of money so mm. how does this work 
I feel maybe we should go back to the times of public shaming. You know, very clearly you want to see the face of these people who are actually, acu- actually not, yeah. not accused. I'm talking about after they are convicted. convicted. Yeah. You yeah. see, because you don't want people to misuse. You don't want the women to right. misuse. In the past, you used to Correct. publish pictures, mugshots so of these guys. I think there should be, you know, you create a wall of shame, goddammit. Yeah. And those who are convicted for sexual molestation or sexual offenses, I think I'd like to see right. that, it, hey, yeah. so that's, okay. let, let, so that's okay. the loss of credibility. Much shot really of a rapist. Makes, uh, yeah. The loss second of loss of face, by putting your face. Yeah. Okay. The second one I feel should be the loss of money. Because I see when there are slander cases, when there are cases of, you know, when they're liable for slander, mm-hmm. then you're traumatized and they have to actually, the, the victim has to be paid you know, has to be, there is a compensation, like right, we say. Right, okay. And that, because of that, you lose money. Mm. And I think those two would, heck, be a lot of, you know, they would be a deterrent. And that's the way we should Okay. Go. What do you suggest? What do you suggest? Right. Uh, I like to address those two points because, you know, I think they're very interesting points. Let's talk about this. Uh, criminologists have often said, and this is an interesting thing, whether or not we accept it, I think you, is, is worth thinking about that penalties don't really make a difference in deterrence. It is What makes a difference in deterrence is whether or not people think they're going to get caught. So you can have the death penalty, but they think very small chance of me getting caught, they will still do the crime. Mm. You can have a lower penalty of five years jail, but very high chance of getting caught, they won't do the crime. Mm. So deterrence is much more dependent upon the likelihood of being caught rather than the punishment itself. If that is the case, then I think we up it and, and make it uh, 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 so by making sure that people know that there is a very high chance that they will get caught because the women will report, yes. that people who notice things will report, right. that there's no more a complicity of silence. Right. Mm-hmm. And I think that's very important. Yeah. And mm. after they are reported and convicted, your mm. face will be there. Sure. So the other the women problem know. With that, the problem with that is that sometimes the victim is related and there is a gag order because if you release the identity of the assault person, oh, the, yes. the rapist, no, no. We that's know. right. We yes. know that's the reason it was stopped. But... Heck, if your if cases are going to increase the way they are increasing, yeah, but the maybe victim may not want that. Let's say, for example, a, a girl's a, so anyway, give the victim stepfather. a choice. Give the victim a choice. I say, let her decide mm. and say, you know what? I don't care even if he was my stepfather. If he was my stepfather, he shouldn't no, be no. doing this. The point in the first is, place. then her identity would be in public, right? But then and that's her her choice. Sure, but Just I think like the problem this, is that that can stigmatize her. No, true. In the but future. that's the way you give the choice, right? Mm. Just like these women, like we were talking about the the woman in in US, and she went and complained about her vibrator <coughs> getting stolen. Some point of time in life, at least when we were bring we were being uh, we were growing up, I could have imagined that a woman would be able to go there and say that openly. Sure, they are but doing her identity it now. Was kept right, quiet. but. Yeah. Make a choice. Yeah. If you choose, no, I don't want to go with it. I don't want to be traumatized by seeing that face all my life. Fair enough. Back in the day, back in your day, and even back in my day, Daisy, there was no such thing called a vibrator in Singapore. We don't know. A lot of people had to improvise, you know. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. not stray off topic here. Anyway, yeah. I, want to, yeah. I, I need a good point, you know, and I think what, what uh, Gilbert said also makes sense, but let's not, you know, we shouldn't raise pictures, mugshots of the offender. Yeah, right? it's going to... And then it's going to... Because society might not be so kind yes, to the exactly, victim as well. Exactly. Because people are... You know, society is really funny. Yeah. I mean, yes. I've had people... You know, I haven't had someone on my show before that that had her son... Uh, uh, he, he died by, by suicide. And she was stigmatized by, yeah. by people. Yes. And it's crazy. I mean, it what? Is. You know, but you know I, they do that to pedophiles. Yeah. But, but, no, but they do that to pedophiles yeah. in the US. I mean, call me draconian, man. But my solution, my recommendation would be two things. One that is draconian. Why? Because it's like probably existed in ancient China. Let me guess. That if... Cut it off. A guy... Cut the guy's nuts yeah, I, off. I know where he's coming from. Put Cut. it into a damn jar yeah, filled with vinegar and make him walk around holding the whole it. country yeah, holding, holding the, you know. That, that way you can see It's called the a guy. eunuch's punishment. Ah. That's number one. Number two. Ugh. I forget. Uh, <laughs> no, but then you can see the guy <laughs> holding his Wait. nuts and walking okay. around. Yeah, I think practically his... that's just not going to fly. So. And yeah. secondly, oh no, no, second yeah. thing, second thing, second thing. And I said this before, man. We should promote the use your hands campaign. 
Okay, okay. okay. You cannot so, do anything about on it. a serious that, note, that is don't time worry for about us. the calluses in your hands. Just basically. go through it. And we're going to yeah. move on so, to the next story. And that's about scamming in Singapore. It's taken a real hike uh, since... 2020 as well, and this happened. Re- something ha- happened recently uh, to this uh, particular person who uh, doesn't have a you know get this doesn't have a PayPal account. And then one day, she goes to the ATM, or rather, she was trying to pay someone or something, and realized that she only had seven dollars left in her bank account. That's so sad. Someone's been scamming off or skimming off her bank account of a standard amount of $12 something each time. And she doesn't even have a pay, through a PayPal account that she doesn't have. She suspects that, you know, she's been receiving phone calls. Like, I don't know about you guys, but I get that. I get those all the time. Mm, mm, mm. When you have a plus six five, even if it's a plus six five prefix, or if it's going to be a plus something country code, we know for a fact by now for those of us who've got some common sense, that that's a scam call, right? However, uh, she said she hardly un- un- answers those calls as well. But somehow, someone got through to her PayPal. Now, this thing is on the rise, man. Got through to her account. She doesn't have PayPal. Oh, sorry, got yeah. through to her account. Yeah, her but, bank account. Okay, sorry. Thank you for pointing it out. See, la, smart depends. Okay, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the, the the G, the government, has come up with a mobile app called Scam Shield. And I just downloaded it like about one hour ago to see whether the damn thing works. Lah. But so far I don't have a scam call to report. Lah. When I get a scam call, I'll check, I'll tell you guys. Okay, how it so works, the, the, the the scam shield basically is just a list of known phone numbers from which scammers call. <laughs> so it's not really very useful because the numbers are so portable and so mobile and it okay. keep changing and all of that and the up you know they can't update that i think the bottom line basically is that you know one of the big reasons why there's such an increase in cyber scams is for the simple reason that so many more people are using cyberspace and using in the internet for so many more transactions uh, so it opens people up but there are a couple of things here that jump out at me about this story which i think is representative of scams in general okay first of all uh, you got to watch your account. So this woman had a small amount, twelve forty four, deducted multiple times. Didn't notice it until she was left with no money. Mm. So obviously, you know, for everyone out there, just pay attention to your account. If anything is deducted that is unauthorized, even if it's a relatively small amount, please pay attention to that. Mm. Secondly, is treat every incoming call as a potential scam. You got to have that hyper cyber. <laughs> mentality. Well, I'm basically. not going to put down the phone if my mother calls me. I be think like your a, mom, like a detective yourself. Yeah, yeah. Well, just be just be suspicious. You know, mm. I think that there are a lot, and and generally, I say generally because it's not always the case. The people who are scammed are the older folks because mm. they're less tech savvy. They also come from a generation, I think, where the trust in anything that uh, 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 vaguely authoritative, you know, is mm. is there. Mm. Um, so they're less suspicious. I mean, certainly, you look at the kind of WhatsApp. <laughs> nonsense that goes around that all the people just believe in because they're getting on WhatsApp. They believe in it and they share it, right? Mm-hmm. So be suspicious. I think you just have to protect yourself that way. I'll tell you what we do, Daisy. Mm. Starting tonight, mm. every night, 8.30 p.m., mm. we all use different phones and we call and Gilbert. call Gilbert. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll okay. see what he does. Well, you, you can be sure I'm not going to fall for that. Okay, so I just want to say it's $201 million was lost to scams. 15,756 scams. Is that global cases. or is that? No, we are looking at in Singapore. Singapore. Mm. Pushing the crime rate to its highest, like you said, since 2000. Yeah, carousels are the I, highest I, number, man. Yeah, but I, I just want to go uh, take a different tack and say, okay, why are these scams happening or what are the reasons? Mm. And once again, you come that you know that scams are about enticing people and by taking advantage of the vulnerability of people. Because, you know, people are lonely, there's financial distress, maybe there's sexual repression, they, they want to get rich fast. And this then manifests itself in the feelings of greed, in the feelings of sadness, desperation. Because I truly think that, you know, human beings are flawed. We are weak. We have those moments of weakness where you, where you want to believe that this is true and that you can get rich immediately. I mean, come on, we are scammed into becoming terrorists, for God's sake online today. So I feel that there are soft targets 
they're out there, these scammers, they'll go for 10,000 people. Even if you hit one, you're okay. And I'll tell you what, in 20, since 2010 in Crime Watch, one of the shows I, I used to produce for Media Corp, from that time, this messaging, this showing of scams on television, watch out, watch out, watch out, has been going on, especially love scams. And like you correctly said, you know, they, they use trusted mediums, Lazada, Carousel, Tinder, for the love scams. And yet, people somehow feel, not me. I will never okay. be scammed. And they do get scammed. Right, right. I think that if you actually look at the statistics, the number one category of scams is not the love scams anymore, but mm. the e-commerce scams, mm -hmm. which makes sense because yeah. more we're buying more and more stuff Correct. online. Mm -hmm. yep. So, and you know... This is actually very dangerous because it is very easy to fall prey to an e-commerce scam. I have myself simply because you go to a website. It looks perfectly legitimate. Correct. It has got the products that yep. you want. Yep. You give your credit card number. Mm. Yep. And then you realize that. Hubbies. Uh, yeah. 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 But because you, know, the, the, you go back to the site a few days later and the site is gone. Gone. Free tickets from Singapore Airlines. I nearly fell off my chair. Okay. Forget about that because those <laughs> are the kind of scams whereby they're trying to target you and tell you you've won something or it's too good to be true. Those I think are easy enough to resist because you just tell yourself if it's too good to be true, it often it just, yes. is. But, it's but if you're just doing normal cyber uh, 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 purchase online shopping, shopping, shopping yes, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So the solution to this really is just to use PayPal because PayPal protects you. The thing about PayPal is that you're not giving your credit card number to anybody. You are paying PayPal through, uh, you're paying the vendor through your PayPal account. The before someone can even accept PayPal payments, they have to put money into an escrow, basically. Mm -hmm. yeah. So therefore, PayPal can, can can take the money away from them. Yeah, yeah. And you only the PayPal will only pay the the, the, the vendor if you receive your product. Yes, actually, so, Shopee is the same is, concept. Correct. You can yes. put money in, in escrow. Yes, yes. Yes. So, so if you go with Shopee and Lazada, it's okay. Correct. Yeah. But this is yeah. for shopping. Some of the elderly, there was a scam. I remember one of those which we picturized about how this. China, this this man from China, he actually found these older people and said, I've got gold bars. And he actually went to these elderly people and he showed, and one of them was an actual bar. Yeah. And they were in shock. And he said, I can give this to you only for $250,000. Sure. You buy it. And what they actually got was just... You know those chocolates which you yes, get yes, with yes, the... Yes, yes, yes. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you course. know, I, but I you mean, know, it's... It, of course, but, but those are few and far between bars. now. Those are few and far between no, now. No, no, true. But what I want to say, Gilbert, is that everything is becoming more and more sophisticated. Complex. You know, sophisticated, complex. Gosh, I'll tell you what happened to my husband. So he was getting these plus 65 calls and he was keeping on noticing a pattern. And he went back to his telco provider and he actually said that is there some way in because he's assuming that if that same number keeps coming up let's say 20,000 times and the telco provider can actually see that is there some way by which the telco provider themselves can block that number and they at this stage they said no they mm. said we cannot do anything you have to, if you see a pattern, you block that number. Mm -hmm. I think moving forward, as the scammers get more technologically savvy, so sophisticated, we. we'll just have to take every step of the way and find, you know, how we are going to deal with yeah, it. Yeah, obviously. I think that, that, that that's the empowerment of, of, of for all of us is just to be more aware of what is happening. But you know what Daisy said about why do people do this? I mean, why is there an increase? Well, obviously, uh, you know, uh, uh, during hard times, not hard times, sorry, during circuit breaker or times when people, more people are getting online, as you said, uh, more people are, become, are becoming more opportunistic to try and scam others. I really don't think it's because, you know, the, it, most of these cases occur by people who are desperate, you know, they, they have yeah, mouths yeah, to yeah. feed. No, no, no. I don't no, think so. I don't think so. I don't it think really so. is a syndicate. Because you think about it this way, right? What we have to realize is cyberspace is borderless. Mm. I mean, if you're talking about Singapore crime, people are want to commit crime in Singapore, they have to come into Singapore. Mm. But in cyberspace, it's borderless. Absolutely. Someone in Nigeria, someone in China, someone oh, anywhere, anywhere can just reach out. And, and, and I think Singaporeans, because of the years of safety and security here, have a very complacent attitude about crime. Yep. In the same way as when people travel overseas, they are always the ones that get pickpocketed the first Singaporeans, mm -hmm. you know, get mugged the first because mm -hmm. they walk around in Rome or in yeah, you know, yeah. other They're cities Gundula, as right. if it's Singapore. But you know, Gilbert, you're yeah. you're absolutely spot on. 
I remember when we started, and just going back a bit on the scams, you remember that those Nigerian, those scams? Of course, so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah. we went so, on to, I've received one long uh, email yes. saying that somebody is, yes, somebody has left me <laughs> yeah. millions of dollars. And I'm like, I don't know a single person who's got a million dollars. Yeah. Who's going to leave that to me? Yeah. But now it's organized crime. Yes, now yes. they are moving. They are getting more sophisticated. They are getting smarter. We're getting smarter. They're getting even more smarter. Remember, yeah. there was a couple of episodes ago, we talked about something else. We talked about people um, who scam others by using uh, your, your, your server, your, your IP address, right? Yes. And when, when the cops try to spot them, it, it goes as far as Bulgaria, man. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's like, yeah. you yes. know. Croatia, yeah. Bulgaria, yeah, exactly. we've been here. And so Bulgaria, is, Bulgaria is a place. Budapest is it's filled Budapest with... Budapest Hungary. <laughs> but yeah, oh, sorry. I yeah, got, Bul- okay, Hungary. Yeah. Dude, I got no, call. Okay, no, Bulgaria is one true enough. Yeah, there yeah, yeah, are scammers yeah, yeah. there, but not Budapest. The, let me finish. Okay. Budapest is like the capital of where all these scammers come from. Yes. Really? It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a whole place well, filled with. Look, I don't know because I, I got a call from somebody who said, and he had an Indian <laughs> accent, okay? He had an Indian accent. But he was from Budapest. He, he was from Budapest, Hungary, Guatemala. I don't know where he was from, but he told me there's Smart a virus. Man. Uh, which is there yes, in yes, your uh, yeah. and and I think for a second I was like oh, 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 because I'm like no and then I heard in the way he was a uh, talking yeah. <laughs> then he said of course give me your uh, uh, login number and yes, give me this exactly. and, he wants to and I was like oh himself. damn but then I told him I yeah. said I'm stupid but not that stupid thank Good you very you. much uh, I've, had, no. I've had a call like that too a guy with a thick Indian accent I'll tell you this. I he was from Budapest. Uh, no, exactly. no, no, no. Let me let me just say this, okay, for for everyone out there. I told him have a banana way, instead. Sorry, sorry. One way you can banana. really tell when it's a scammer is when the grammar is bad, okay. When <laughs> when I get messages, really? literally, when I when I when I called when this number called me and it was a recorded voice saying, "This is DBS. Your account have problem." I said, no, no, your English has problems. No, no, wait, 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 wait. No, and saying, I'm telling you, basically, on. Gilbert, no, I got a lot call. of times the grammar is just atrocious. I don't I think it's grammar. I think you, you can't say grammar. I know so many people who work in these places who call and say, hello. No, 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 that's not no, the point. I Are you to, Mr. Cleese? No, we're talking about and the official correspondence. <laughs> you know, official I got Official correspondence call. will not have that. You're right. Wait, 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 wait. If you say if they've got a foreign accent, I agree. No, this but is not, not because an of bad this, grammar. No, no I'm listen gonna... to me, Chris. This is it's... a recorded announcement in a professional voice because they use the auto voice. Correct. But uh, the grammar yeah. is bad. But I so got if... a call from somebody who spoke about the DBS account. And there was a live guy, right? And I don't have a DBS account. Okay. But it's well, a live guy. Like, oh. huh? Is someone, um, it was a live call. It wasn't live, a recorded call, call, right? Live call, live yeah, call. I had a live call with a guy with a thick Indian accent. And, like, huh? and I told him, oh, really, really? I tell you what, I'd like to deposit my banana with you. And? Take my but, banana and deposit but, it. You know, you so they don't take accounts. That's Enjoy. Right. <laughs> chom, chom, chom. Okay. Right. He didn't okay. hear that. He didn't okay. hear that. Okay. Okay. Uh, but okay, we've got your opinions already. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to add before uh, I hand over to Dear Daisy to close the show? No, we, before we close, uh, we have to go through your ditty. You want my ditty first? Go, yeah, please. Please, let's hear the ditty about the scam calls yeah. and the cortex. I'm today, looking today, forward today, to that. Today, quite not so stiff for today, Vedam. Mm, mm, mm. Chris is. It is. Yeah, I, I think we need to once remove this mic and all and give you a close-up Can see it, can see it, can see it. Huh, guys? See it. I think the people on Spotify are lucky. Huh? Uh, yeah. Yeah. People, yeah, she said that before. Okay, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Use something new, okay? Getting stale with you. All right, go facts ahead, facts. go ahead. Yes, facts money the pants. Same. Okay, Ditties. here's my ditty. Okay. See, pretty girl, she's someone else's pearl. She's not yours for the taking. You touch your pantat will kena caning. And we get so many of those calls trying to get us to fall into their trap and play their ball. Else. I was being polite. <laughs> hey, let me finish. Let me root. Okay, continue. 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 continue, continue. Later, you see your bank account. Then you realize you've been a clown. So please be clever about not leaving a trail and let other people pull your tail. Today's lesson, all must learn. Mm. 
Stay safe and don't gonna burn. Mm. Use your hands campaign is what we advocate. Alamah. Use it well before it's too late. Mm. The end. Thank God. Uh, I just want to say uh, that I don't know much about this uh, hands campaign. That's not true. Next That's time, you, you, next time we will you have, have to a long interview, discussion with me before we start the show. You about you know what very what well what use your hands campaign is all about. Gilbert even knew about it. Gilbert okay, spoke Gilbert. to me about it over the phone. Okay, Gilbert, go ahead, please. Don't slander me. This is the way they scam. No, you see? S- no, no, the, Gilbert. This is the scam. This is lies. Hello. This is fake news. Can I speak to Professor Gilbert Chia, please? please? Okay. 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 Gilbert Chia, can you please say something? With regards to the cyber scams, uh, mm. everybody, just please be careful. Um, the world is a cruel, mean, and uh, horrible place. We're very negative, no you? Uh, <laughs> oh, love it. And it's incumbent upon each of us to protect ourselves and to protect the ones that we love. Uh, and if you take that attitude, at least with respect to cyberspace itself, uh, then it leaves you a lot of uh, protection, gives you a lot of protection, and you can then be kind in real life. I'd much rather you be kind in real life uh, and be suspicious online uh, than the other way around, which a lot of people mistakenly do. Mm, mm. So be safe and be kind. Well, you really, okay. you really think the world is such an evil, now, horrible place. I'd like to online world. And you don't have piles. Online world. Oh, okay, boy. I'd like to close. Yes, please. I'm not listening to this. I need to close the show. I just want to say that we are living in a world which is getting more sophisticated and so are the methods of scamming. So we should be guarding our own systems now with greater care and intensity because ultimately they will, they will, this is going to get so sophisticated that in the words of Victor J. Stenger, who's a physicist, he said, selling eternal life will be an unbeatable business. The scams will get so bad that selling eternal life will be an unbeatable business with no customers ever asking for their money back after the goods are not delivered. So on that tongue-in-cheek note, I say on behalf of my IOHO team, please listen to us, watch us, follow us, like us on the social media feeds. We are not a scam, though half of... mm, I'm not going to mention. And uh, yes on FB, Instagram, and YouTube. The audio version is also on Spotify and YouTube. And iTunes, iTunes. This is not a scam. Namaste, namaste. And remember, Gilbert said, stay protected. And he's not talking about rubber. Bye, everybody. Why do you always have to say something at the end? Oh my God, please cut.